Brontes are an extraordinary family. To have three great writers from one family, I think it's got so many kind of potent aspects um, to the Bronte story. The nature of the Brontes' writings, which is so powerful and so original. When you look at their works, they reflect this wider, broad, exciting world, and they really got to know the world through books and that's reflected in their writing, and that's really, really quite beautiful. I think they're all really powerful. After you've closed the book, the images stay in your head for a lifetime. The discovery of this collection was hugely significant. It charts the whole of the Brontes' development as writers, as well as providing such rich material on their lives. When the Bronte material that had been allocated to the parsonage arrived in Haworth in July, the moment when we unpacked it, it was just incredible. It was really quite emotional. But one of the treasures which is now at the parsonage is this tiny volume. And these are meant to look like printed books, like the kind of books such as Blackwood's magazine, which came into the parsonage and was read avidly by all the Brontes. The handwriting is minuscule. And I think when we think about the Brontes, biographies about how they really experienced loss at such a young age, losing their mother and their siblings, it suddenly makes sense. I can barely read the handwriting in these volumes. It keeps adults out. It's a world that children can control themselves. They have agency over it. This was part of a sequence of six tiny books. So when the collection came to light, we've now been able to retrieve this little book and, and return it to Haworth where it was written and where we can display it. So it's completed that whole series. The objects that have been allocated to the British Library, they are now with other Bronte material. They can be compared and studied within their small group and actually with wider objects within the library. We've got a letter from Charlotte Bronte written in 1847. It's a really interesting letter because it talks about the identity of Curra, Ellis and Acton Bell. And indeed it also talks about the authorship of the 1846 volume of poems by the three sisters. One of the really star items here at the British Library is Emily Bronte's own copy of poems by Curra Ellis and Acton Bell, which is the sisters' first uh, publication together when they were still writing anonymously. It's really, really special because she has gone all the way through and she's written the date that she composed each of her poems. And I think that will just be really important for researchers going forward, what she was doing on those specific days and why she might have been inspired to write particular poems. The copy of Shirley that we got from the Honnersfield Library is really fascinating, I think. So it has a letter from Charlotte Bronte bound inside it. It's from Charlotte, her editor, saying, the book is now finished, thank God, which I think is like a really humanising moment. I think there's a very nice story in the manuscript material where you particularly see the sisters developing as writers. I mean, one of the lovely things on the table behind me is, is one of Charlotte's little books where she's really beginning to make that transition from a, a child who's interested in books and writing and fantasy worlds and really beginning to think about how she might present herself as a more mature author in the outside world. This is called Fireside Tales. She wrote it while she was working at Rowhead School. And it has this wonderful opening line where she says, Reader, I'll tell you what my heart is like to break. Um, which is a wonderful prefiguring of that famous line from Jane Eyre where she says, Reader, I married him. So you can just hear that voice emerging from this very early text. So these tell us a great deal about the writers and about their relationships, and also what feeds into their imaginative lives as writers. In this first edition of Wuthering Heights, we've got a lovely example of the kind of thing that scholars are going to be looking for in, in these printed works. So there's a, a little annotation at the bottom of the page there, which we believe is from William Law, and he's talking about um, the birds that are part of this page here. And he's gone to look them up in Buick, which is, of course, Buick's birds, 
And rather wonderfully, the Bronte's own version of Buick's Birds was also part of this Honours Field collection. And of course, there's an important link with the novels in that it was Buick's Birds that Jane Eyre is reading in the window seat at Gateshead Hall. And some of the, the kind of lonely Arctic landscapes that Buick um, illustrates kind of sum up Jane's isolation. I think it's really amazing that this collection has been saved for the nation. They've not been bought by private collectors. The public owns these objects and that's so important because they're, they're absolutely incredible.